Shabbat Shalom, my friends, and Chag Sameach. I am posting this on Thursday evening. Friday evening will be the start of Pesach, marked by Jews around the world as they sit at the Seder table and recount the exodus from Egypt, singing, eating, reading the Haggadah, eating, and talking, a great deal of talking, and a great deal of eating. But that means that Saturday morning, this Shabbat morning, is the first day of the Chag, the first day of the festival. So we shift from reading the regular weekly Sedra and read Exodus 12, 21 to 51, Numbers 28, 16 to 25, texts which retell our escape from Egypt and the proper sacrifices of gratitude to be offered. Curiosity is at the core of the Seder. Curiosity is at the core of the Seder. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, curiosity is the most important thing we can bring to our observance of Pesach. The four questions exist as a means of bringing our curiosity onto the floor. Why, they ask. Why do we usually do things one way, but during the Seder we do things so differently? Matzah, mavor, reclining, dipping. Why? And the Seder table is set with some rather unusual features, a roasted shank bone, pungent horseradish, rapidly wilting greens, and there's that haroset of a thousand versions. There is also a big extra goblet on the table, maybe two, and an orange. Why? Games are played. The youngest child gets a shot at fame as they chant Manishtana. Some of the songs at the end of the Seder are more like tests of lung capacity than they are of anything resembling liturgy. Who knows one? I know 13. Chadgadya. Dad went to the market to buy a kid, and in 13 steps, God's justice reigns supreme. Why? What's going on? In a security-crazed world, we throw open the doors of our home to a stranger and welcome an invisible guest. Think about that. We want him to announce the beginning of the Messianic kingdom, but we have a little bit of a concern here. Yes, Elijah, bring the Messianic kingdom, but not this weekend. My kid has soccer practice. But we don't just add items to our festival table. We have no bread, no rolls to serve. For some, rice won't show up, but for others, there it is. For some, peanuts will show up, but for others, it's banned. Our favorite recipes undergo serious revisions. We just won't be making our wonderful roast beef with beer during Passover. It's just not done. Why? It's all about stimulating curiosity. This is what we hope will happen at the Seder table, according to a text in the Talmud. Quote, when children question why we eat unleavened bread for the seven days of the holiday, Torah guides us. And you shall explain to your child on the day, it is because of what the Eternal did for me when I went free from Egypt, close quote. But curiosity must not be reserved for the younger members of the family. Why? Why is this night, why is this week so very different from any other period of the year? For example, why the prohibition of what we call chomets? Well, we can all give the book answer. We know it. But so much more is going on here than just imitating how our ancestors fled Egypt. Freud, Sigmund Freud, once famously said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, but on Pesach, chametz, something different is going on here. The urge to dispose of chametz touches us far more deeply than we usually bother to think about. Peoples across the globe want, need, 
the spring season to represent much more than the imperative to undertake spring cleaning. There is so much chametz in our lives, so much that is unworthy, so much that is unnecessary, so much that is troubling. We want that chametz gone from our lives. The chametz of fear, of hatred, of jealousy, of a crushing remorse, the chomets of arrogance, of indifference, of racism, of misogyny, the chomets of dividing our world up into us and them, the chomets of feeling that if someone views their gender identity differently than we do, then it's okay to put them down. And then there is the chomets of willful blindness, hate that one, when we feel comfortable turning away from those who need our support. Those symbols on our Seder table want to stoke our curiosity beyond the obvious. Think, what really is the chomets in your life, in our lives? And how strange is it that our Seder ends with Lashana Haba'ah B'Yerushalayim next year in Jerusalem. Think about it. It's curious, right? We live in a blessed time. For most of us, we wanted to spend time in Israel during Pesach. We could do so. Go right now. Yeah, okay. It can be expensive. But if we care so much about being there that the very last words of our Seder contain a prayerful hope for next year, couldn't we just do it now? But that phrase on the last page of the Haggadah does much more than just hearken back to the time when there wasn't an Israel for us to visit, a time before I was nine years old. That simply expressed yearning is a powerful recognition that the Jerusalem of our dreams is not yet the Jerusalem of geopolitical reality. Jewish tradition has long acknowledged that there are two Jerusalems, a Yerushalayim shel Mala and a Yerushalayim shel Mata, a heavenly Jerusalem, a Jerusalem that expresses our dreams, our yearnings, our aspirations, and the mundane Jerusalem. Jerusalem as it is today, imperfect in so many ways. We can't visit the Yerushalayim Shalmala today because it just doesn't exist. Not yet, not no. That closing phrase of the Seder is to remind us as we kind of like stagger to our feet that we have work to do today, real work, important work. The earthly Jerusalem is intended to lift up the banner of justice and freedom and of equality and of hope and of peace in our world. The earthly Jerusalem is intended to be that. And that will never happen if we don't take on active responsibility to unite Yerushalayim Shomala and Yerushalayim Shomata. So much on the table should be stimulating our deepest curiosity, not just our taste buds, haroset. Now, that's the symbol of the mortar used by our enslaved ancestors. We know that. So, what else is there to be curious about? Did you ever notice how many different recipes that there are for charosa? Ashkenazi, Israeli, African-American, Syrian, Italian, Persian, vegan, many more. If we allow curiosity in, the message is stunningly clear. We are one people blessed with incredible variety. Just as we celebrate Pesach with a variety of charoset styles and recipes on our table, so might we consider opening our hearts and minds to the beauty of diversity and to the wholeness of wholesomeness of inclusivity within our own Jewish community. The festival of Passover is all about stimulating serious curiosity. Though our sardarim are now over, 
We still have most of a week to open our minds to wherever our curiosity might lead us. That chometz we remove from our homes is much more than white bread and pasta and pizza. Take the time, my friends, to really respond to Pesach by being curious. Shabbat Shalom. Chag Sameach. See you next week. Have a good Yom Tov.